Good morning. Welcome to the historic church of St. Patrick's on the sixth Sunday in ordinary time. Our celebrant this morning is Monsignor Chris Vasco, assisted by Deacon Dave Smith. The opening hymn this morning, please stand. We walk by faith, 700. We walk by faith. Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
A reading from the book of Sirach. If you choose, you can keep the commandments. They will save you. If you trust in God, you too shall live. He has set before you fire and water. To whichever you choose, stretch forth your hand. Before man are life and death, good and evil. Whichever he chooses shall be given him. Immense is the wisdom of the Lord. He is mighty in power and all-seeing. The eyes of God are on those who fear him. He understands man's every deed. No one does he command to act unjustly. To none does he give license to sin. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The sung response this morning. Blessed are they who follow in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Blessed are they whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they who observe his decrees, who seek him with all their heart. Blessed are they who follow the You have commanded that your precepts be diligently kept. Oh, that I might be firm in the ways of keeping your statutes. Blessed are they who follow good to your servant that I may live and keep your words. Open my eyes that I may consider the wonders of your law. Blessed are they Instruct me, O Lord, in the way of your statutes, that I may exactly observe them. Give me discernment that I may observe your law and keep it with all my heart. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, 
We speak a wisdom for those who are mature, not a wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are passing away. Rather, we speak God's wisdom, mysterious, hidden, which God predetermined before the ages of, for our glory, and which none of the rulers of this age knew. For if they had known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what eye has not seen and ear has not heard, and what has not entered the human heart, what God has prepared for those who love him, this God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit scrutinizes everything, even the depths of God. The word of the Lord. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You have revealed to the little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. Amen, I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or the smallest part of the letter will pass from the law until all things have taken place. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to your ancestors, you shall not kill, and whoever kills will be liable to judgment. But I say to you, whoever is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Raka, will be answerable to the Sanhedrin. And whoever says, you fool, will be liable to fiery Gehana. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and there recall that your brother has anything against you, Leave your gift there at the altar. Go first and be reconciled with your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Settle with your opponent quickly while on the way to court. Otherwise, your opponent will hand you over to the judge, and the judge will hand you over to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Amen, I say to you. You will not be released until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body thrown into Gehenna. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body go into Gehenna. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife must give her a bill of divorce. But I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, unless the marriage is unlawful, causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to your ancestors, 
Do not take a false oath, but make good to the Lord all that you vow. But I say to you, do not swear at all, not by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Do not swear by your head, for you cannot make a single hair white or black. Let your yes mean yes, and your no mean no. Anything more is from the evil one. The Gospel of the Lord. One of the complaints I hear very often at the back of the church or out on the plaza in better weather, although today's weather is about as good as it can get, is why don't we talk more about sin? Let's talk about sin. Well, you can't do that because it doesn't show up very often in sacred scripture, but you're lucky. Today, sin. And so let's take a good look at what it said about sin in our text today, and it's the only one in, that we hear it in is in the book of Sirach. Uh, so here we look at this. Um, the eyes of God are on those who fear him. He understands everything we do. He never commands anyone to act unjustly. So the first thing we had to say about sin is, God didn't give us any right to do it. He never said, go out and commit a sin. He will never say, go out and commit a sin. As a matter of fact, Sirach ends up here, to none does he give license to sin. And so none of us has any permission. We have no right. We have no claim to commit a sin. We can't do it. And Sirach, kind of at the beginning of this, uh, says there's a good reason for that. God doesn't want us to get the rewards of sin. So he says here, he has said before you fire and water. Choose whichever one you want, good or evil. Now here's the kicker. Whichever he chooses shall be given to him. If we choose to do good, goodness will follow us. But if we choose to do evil, and that's what sin is, a choice to do evil, then evil will follow us. And God warns us, it's not his fault, it's ours. And so the, the punishments that are attached to sin are not there because God wants them there, they're there because we put them there. Now, having said all that about sin, and it's very real, people can commit them. Uh, we have a letter uh, from St. Paul to the Corinthians, and he says, you know, let's be honest. People do a lot of stuff that's pretty bad and can lead to a lot of evil, but isn't a sin. So he uses as an example, he says, um, none of the rulers of this age knew for if they had known it, they would never have crucified the Lord of glory. If they had known it. And so ignorance is always an out. It doesn't allow us to sin. But it does open the door to all the effects of evil. Those things that we do without thinking first that are not good can have the same horrible results as if we deliberately chose to do whatever we did. And so while they did not know they were crucifying God, all of the horrible results followed. The disciples ran off into the darkness. Jesus is beaten at the, uh, the down at the court, given a crown of thorns, and dies. All the evil because of one act of ignorance. And so we have to look around us and say, what do we do 
because all of this evil is around us. The, the evil that people do by accident or from ignorance, that's there. How do we deal with it? And that's why if you look at the criminal code, uh, it's very obvious in the Code of Canon Law, but that's a much harder document to follow up on. But if you look at the criminal code and watch what's happening over at the uh, county courthouse, you can see that there are degrees of how we respond to evil. So for instance, uh, the easiest one, because Jesus mentions it in, in the gospel today, is, is killing, murder. Uh, first degree murder, malice aforethought, is a lot different than an accidental, uh, artif what do they call that, uh, involuntary manslaughter. It's still evil, kills somebody, but it's very different because of why it happened. And so we can see that, and we can read about it in the newspaper uh, all the time, that there are degrees of responsibility, imputability, accountability that come from the evil that we do. And the, the less we know what we're doing, the evil may be horribly terrible, but what happens might not be. So we need to keep in mind that while sin always gets the judgment of God, uh, some of the other things might not. In today's gospel, this, by the way, is uh, the continuation of the Sermon on the Mount. It comes right after the Beatitudes. Jesus is up there with his disciples. And uh, one of them obviously is thinking about what he just said in the Beatitudes and asked a question to which Jesus answers, oh, don't think that I came to get rid of the law or the prophets. I didn't come here to end anything. I came here to fulfill everything. And then he goes on and looks at the Old Testament in terms of what it has to say about evil. Not necessarily about sin, but about evil. And so what he's going to do is offer us a unique insight into how Jesus, who is God, interprets the Ten Commandments. And he does that. It's a big, long section of the Gospel of Matthew. It's one of the few places that he talks serious theology. Most of what Jesus has to tell us are stories about the kingdom and why we might want to get there, about sin and how he can forgive it. But here he begins to, to flesh out God's understanding of what God thought were pretty simple instructions, the Ten Commandments. So he starts off, he says, now you've heard that uh, the Ten Commandments say, don't kill. And Jesus says, well, come on now. Don't make that so darn narrowly defined that an awful lot of evil isn't killing, because it is. So he's, he kind of uh, reminds us that we can kill people in a lot of ways. Certainly, we can kill them physically. That happens all the time. Uh, I read in the paper a couple of trials that are going on for murder right here in town. There, there's a big headline that uh, three young teenagers since the beginning of the year uh, have been shot and killed here in Toledo. So that kind of killing occurs. But how about killing somebody by destroying their reputation? Spreading malicious gossip? telling stories that we know aren't true, but boy, we wish they were because they could make a great movie. That's killing someone just as dead as if we shot them with a gun. Or how about killing someone emotionally? We read all these stories. Uh, there's another uh, thing in today's Blade about a young girl, a 14-year-old girl who committed suicide because she was beaten at school, bullied, knocked into a corner. We can kill people emotionally. And then suddenly those emotions lead that person to undertake serious, horrible steps. Our evil leads to terrible results. 
We can kill people mentally. You know, if we constantly tell someone they're worthless, they're no good, they're rotten, and it happens over and over and over again, we've killed them because we destroy their esteem. We destroy their human dignity. We tear down the image and likeness of God that should brighten their lives. And so Jesus tells us in this text today, be careful because killing isn't just to destroy a physical body. It can destroy a soul and a mind and a heart. And then he says in today's text also, you shall not commit adultery. Well, for the Old Testament peoples, they had that so narrowly defined that it was only a woman could do it and she had to be married and she had to be unfaithful to her spouse. The guy could never commit adultery. That wasn't the Old Testament rule. And Jesus is saying, oh, come on, are you kidding? And so he gives all of these examples in the text today about what adultery really is. And so there are many people who like to have a, maybe a scantily clad calendar in the back room. That's adultery. It's taking advantage of another person. People who use pornography are committing adultery. They may never meet the people who they're watching but they are taking advantage of another person. That's adultery. And so Jesus says, think big on these issues and don't choose to do them. Behave as a human being should. Behave as someone in the image and likeness of God should. And so when Jesus then gets down into this, um, this last one, he says, um, do not take a false oath but make good to the Lord all that you, all that you vow. Um, the false oath, is, uh, that's the commandment, thou shalt not lie. And uh, he is, as he gets in there, he says, do you know why we have to have oaths? Why do we do that? You know, when the president uh, takes an oath of office, he puts his hand on a Bible, and he says, so help me God. And when we see that, why do we have to do that? because we don't trust each other. We know that lying is so easy and so common and so normal that we have to have some guarantee. And Jesus says, that's ridiculous. Do what you're supposed to do. People will trust you. Behave the way you're supposed to behave and they will trust you. So he says, when you say yes, mean yes, what he's doing is saying, live a good life so that you earn the respect of other people. And when you say no, they know you mean it. And when you say yes, they know you mean it. So as we look into what Jesus has to say about these uh, 10 commandments, he never talks about sin. He talks about behaviors. Behaviors that should be typical of a human person who is living in the image and likeness of God. And behaviors of those who choose not to live in the image and likeness of God. Those can lead to terrible effects, whether they are accidents, whether they are foolishness, whether they are ignorance, whether they're just plain stupid, or whether we choose them. If we choose them, they're sins. And so yes, sin is out there. We do choose to do evil. And thank God we have that box over there where Jesus Christ says in a moment of loving encounter, I will forgive those sins. As a matter of fact, I'll absolve them. I will erase them from God's memory so they cannot be held against us. And so we need to be aware of this, make use of the box, and celebrate the love of God in our lives. It's medicine, medicine that helps us always to choose the good.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. God gave all of us an intellect to be used to do good. One of the greatest goods we can do is to be aware of the needs of the world around us and bring them to our loving God. For the church, led by Pope Francis and all the bishops, that we always guided by the spirit of God's law. Atiarna es lin. Atiarna ashlin rosta. For those who enact, enforce, or interpret the law, may they seek true justice for all those they are pledged to serve. Atiarna es lin. Atiarna es lin rosta. For married and engaged couples, that they work to nurture their relationships, guided by Christ to become a sign of his selfless love. Atiarna es lin. Atiarna es lin rosta. For those suffering from chronic illness or debilitating conditions, Atiarna is Lin. Atiarna is Lin Rashta. For the victims, their families of the tragic earthquake in Turkey and Syria, that the survivors, all rescue workers and medical teams, may be comforted and strengthened by our prayers and support in this time of dire need, and that those who have died will be granted eternal peace in the kingdom of heaven. Atiarna is Lin. For the parishioners of the historic Church of St. Patrick, Atiarna Eastlin. Atiarna Eastlin Rashta. And as we are the church of uh, the first responders and the police, let's pray that the uh, patrolman in Tucson who was run down and lost his leg as a result of that injury might be restored to the fullness of health and the young man who so carelessly drove into him might have a conversion of heart. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O loving and eternal God, we share with you all of these our concerns for our brothers and sisters in hope that they will also be your concerns for this day so that you might answer these prayers for us as we know you will in Jesus Christ, our Lord. The offertory hymn this morning is number 635, I Sing the Mighty Power of God, number 635.
spiritual food. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for it is through your goodness that we have this wine which we offer to you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us spiritual drink. Lord, be pleased with the sacrifice which we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my sins and cleanse me of all of my iniquities. My sisters and brothers, pray that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, we pray, these gifts by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Daniel, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God and Patroness of our sister parish, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, our own patron, St. Patrick, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you forever. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. the body of Christ. Amen. The communion hymn this morning is number 780, Christ has made the sure foundation, number 780. Hey. 
Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live, through Christ our Lord. Good morning. Calendar lottery tickets are available in the back of church for $10 each. Prizes most days are $50, $100 on Sundays, $250 on March 1st, $500 on March 31st, and $1,000 on March 17th. We started with 1,000 tickets. We have about 900 tickets left. In addition to buying one for yourself, if you'd be willing to take 10 or more tickets to sell to family, friends, and colleagues, we'd be grateful for your help. If we sell all of the tickets, March will be the most exciting because someone will win every day. Tickets will be available through Sunday, February 26th, as the drawing begins Wednesday, March 1st. We are also still seeking sponsorships for our events, as well as whole and cart sponsors for the golf outing. Please see me for more details. Thank you. Ah, uh, how well I remember when I was this tall, about three weeks ago. <laughs> and it was customary that instead of asking you to take those calendars, we would have sent you uh, 20 of them and said, go out and sell them. I know that's true because uh, me and my brothers and sisters had to go and sell them when mom and dad got them in the mail. So <laughs> we're asking that you please take some along, sell them to your family, sell them to your friends, sell them at the grocery store, sell them wherever you happen to be uh, to help us. Uh, Our goal is to raise money to start an endowment for the Preservation Society. Uh, When we ask for preservation funds, that goes to immediate needs. We have things stretched out in our project list for the next several years of your generosity to the Preservation Society. We'd like to get a, a foundation going That's the goal for this year of all of these things that you hear us uh, marketing, whether it be that or some of those events that are coming up later. So take 10 or 11 of them with you and and, uh, sell them to all your neighbors. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Not yet. Okay. I have an announcement to make. Indeed. (laughs) Please, after today, (laughs) Today... Today is World Day of Marriage, and so our final blessing is going to be for all the married couples uh, who are uh, here at Mass today with us. And so I ask that if you brought your spouse with you, put your arm around them and hold them close. And if you didn't bring your spouse with you, spiritually, 
put your arm around them and bring them close as we celebrate World Day of Marriage. Now, Dave. Listen up. <laughs> Bow down for the blessing. Almighty and eternal God, you bless the union of married couples so that they might reflect the union of Christ with his church. Look with kindness on all of our married couples here today. Renew their marriage covenant. Increase your love in them and strengthen their bond of peace so that with their children they may always rejoice in the gift of your blessing. We ask this through Christ our Lord. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast down to hell Satan, and the other evil spirits who prowl through the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. Thanks for your attendance this morning at the Historic Church of St. Patrick's. Our closing hymn this morning is going to be How Can I Keep From Singing, number 721. And all of those on a diet today, forget it. Number 721. Darkness. Right.